Okay, here I'm going to show how Redis uh, Sentinel works. So you can read the docs here. That's a start. Um, I've read all this. And also these client guidelines are helpful. I read these as well. And then a little of the Redis configuration can be helpful, mainly the slaving and the port. And you can read more about that in the actual Redis Conf sample, which has lots of documentation. So those are the main uh, helpful resources. Uh, here I have installed Redis. All you really had to do is go to the uh, Redis download page. And there's a t you want the 2.8 version. That one is the most stable at present uh, with the Sentinel support in it. Right here. So you click, you know, download, get the tar gz, wget. That's how I did it. And then I tar extracted it to this directory, temp r redis2. And then you just do make. And then you do sudo make install if you want. And then you have a redis cli, you have redis server, you have redis sentinel. But Redis Sentinel is just an alias for Redis Server, really. Um, you can actually get away with just using Redis Server. So, what I'm going to do is set up um, two Redis Servers and uh, two Sentinels. And then a client down here. And the first Redis server will be the master, the second Redis server will be the slave. These two Redis sentinels will be in a quorum of one and pointed at the Redis master. They will auto-discover auto the slave from the master using Redis pub sub, and then they will also discover each other. Each sentinel will discover the other sentinel through Redis pub sub as well. Uh, in here, I have three configuration files and if I were to just look at them briefly you would see they look like this. They were actually simpler than this until Sentinel rewrote the configuration and added some things that are normally implicit. Um, but the main things I set were the ports so I didn't have to define them on the command line and then I defined uh, the uh, quorum and the master server and then I set the, f the down after milliseconds and the failover timeout really low um, so that I could test it faster. I don't want to wait a full minute or three minutes which is what the default is. And then uh, for the second Redis slave I just defined it's a slave of the master automatically so I don't have to specify that using the Redis client. This allows me to get set up quickly so I'm going to start the master I'm going to start the slave. Slave syncs with the master. I'm going to start the first sentinel and the second sentinel. So the sentinels discover the master, the slave, and the other two sentinels. Finally, I'm going to connect to Redis master. So I have this connected. Um, I'm using a Node.js project, and I'm going to start it. Uh, basically, it's important that you're project can understand Sentinel uh, because what it's going to do is if you read the client docs it's going to connect to all Sentinels, find the fastest one, ask the fastest one who the master is at present, connect to the master, ask the master if its role is master and if all that jives it will begin using the master. And so what the program does right now, all it does is every second it writes a key containing the current timestamp. And so it's going to continue to do that. Notice at the beginning, uh, it was trying to use an uh, old configuration, but it after that failed, it asked Sentinel and figured out the correct one. Um, it wasn't memorized by Node, actually. It was memorized in the Sentinel configs, I believe. And the Sentinel configs figured out that last time I ran this, things had changed since then. And it takes eight seconds for them to make any change. So here they've performed a failover since their last saved configuration. So if I were to get the key that I saved, I would see that it's incrementing every second. 
and it's currently coming from the master, which has one slave. So 6379 is the master. That's the only one that will accept writes. If we were writing to the slave, it would complain that it's read-only. So I'm going to simulate a failover event. There's a couple ways you could do it. There's actually a command you can issue to Sentinel, but that's a little fake for me. I want to see like what happens if I were to control C on the master. So the master's dead. The slave is recognizing that it can't talk to its master. And the sentinels are like, oh snap. We better do a failover, right? After like eight seconds. You can see the details of how they elect a new master and agree that it's time to perform an action. In the log, you can see that for about eight seconds, uh, we were not able to talk to any Redis server. The master wasn't talking to us. And then what the client is supposed to do is ask Sentinel each after every failure that what's the new master, but the Sentinel didn't know for the full eight seconds that we configured it not to do anything. Finally, when it knew, it told it, the client automatically reconnected, and all data from that point resumed. Now, I can't keep talking to the master. Um, it's not there. But I can talk to the slave, and I can see that the data is incrementing as it was. Uh, so there's a point here that your app will lose data during that interval where it has to fail over. So you'd want to be careful how you configure that timeout. I guess too low could be dangerous as well. You don't want to just flapping rapidly or um, prematurely failing over because of a moment, you know, like a quick little DNS blip or something like that. Um, if I were to start the Redis master again, what it will do is it'll start It'll think it's the master still, but then Sentinel will find it because of pub sub, and it will say, hey, you are a slave, and it will make it slave up to the now new master. So now we can see that the 6380 is the master, and it has one slave connected to it, which is 6379. And if we were to go back and do git, we would see that our data is incrementing on that slave still. So it'll stay in this configuration until s another failure occurs and it has to fail over. It doesn't automatically go back to the master. And yeah, that's it. So hopefully this little demonstration helps illustrate, uh, in addition to the documentation, uh, more precisely what's happening in a failover.